touching that. Give me the remote. No. Give it. Get off. Zach, what the bloody hell do you think you're doing? You really want to choke her out in the lot of fingers? Yeah. Now pull it tight. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Now she's oh. in trouble. Oh, wait, I know you. You're from that weird family, aren't you? We're not weird. We don't like wrestling. How do you know if you've never been? I've never had rectal bleeding before, but I'm pretty sure I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> How about I shove her head up your ass and then we can find out? Hello? My name is Hutch Morgan. I'm calling from WWE. We'd like both of you to come try out for us. No! WWE! It's all fake anyway, isn't it? Wait, what? Sorry about that. It's The Rock! We're huge fans. Thank you so much. What advice would you give us? We want to be the next you. What are your names again? My name. It doesn't matter what your names are. You walk around here interrupting The Rock, you like you haven't seen the sun in 20 years. You like you just stepped out of Oliver Twist. Please, sir, may I have some more advice, sir? You want some advice? Here's The Rock's advice. Shut your mouth. Thanks, Dwayne. Got it. Good morning, wrestling nerds. Well, this is where we see whether or not you get to go on to WWE. This is our shot, Zach. Hello. Why do you want to wrestle? I'm the toughest bastard in any room. Probably shouldn't swear, not when there's ladies present. Sorry, miss. Sorry about that. If I call your name, that means you'll be coming with me to Florida. Paige. Thank you all very much. You have to take my brother. No one deserves this more than Zach. I wish you the best, son. But this is the end of the line for you. Do you know what it's like to want one thing in life? And then your own sister takes it away from you. It was my dream, too. I have no idea who I'm supposed to be out there. You're not just doing this for you. You're doing it for the family. Page. I myself have come from a wrestling family too. I know exactly what it means to you. But don't worry about being the next me. Be the first you. What? It's Dwayne Johnson. How are you? Prove it. If you smell what the rock is cooking. Yeah, and I'm Vin Diesel, mate. I'm sorry. Ba, 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 ba. This is your seven. That's right, your seven. This is your seven of Movie Mom. For 30 days, I'll watch 30 movies and do 30 podcasts. It's the 25th day, only five days to go. Today is day 25 of Movie Month. Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? Welcome back to Movie Month. Hey everybody, welcome back. It is day 25, as I just said three or four times. And today, I just finished watching the 2019 wrestling biopic... Fighting with my family. The true story about a real person competing in fake fighting. Now, for those of you who know me, you may know that I'm a grown man who is also a fan of professional wrestling, which seems um, like an oxymoron, like a grown man adult fan of professional wrestling. But in fact, 
it is quite a um, a common occurrence, at least around adults that I know. None, you know, like if you if I were to pick um, a group of friends that I have, none of them like wrestling, uh, but me. Uh, but if I were to pick some family members out there, many of them are wrestling fans like me. So I, I choose them. They're, they're also adults, so that counts. Uh, so really, what was this movie about if you've never heard of it? It is the story of a, um, a young woman, a professional wrestler who comes from a wrestling family. Now, wrestling's a weird thing because I'm like, oh, this is a movie about Paige. Paige. But Paige is a fake name. Paige is her character's name. But it's a weird thing in wrestling where you just kind of, you associate these people as their character's name so much so that calling them by their real name feels lame. I don't know. It's almost like with a musician. Would you call, uh, you know, a musician who changed their name? Would you would you call them something else, like their original name? No, you wouldn't because you, you sound like a hardo. I'm not going to call her by her real name, which I definitely remember. Uh, Rhea, Saria. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what her name is. This is a story of young wrestler Paige who, um, well, I guess right now, if you don't know, isn't wrestling because of injuries and may never wrestle again because of injuries. She's had quite a career, quite a story. Um, And this is focused on all the good stuff, basically, the beginning of it. Um, She So this is starring uh, Florence. Now, if you've listened to earlier episodes, I was calling her by the wrong name. And uh, she was recently, I just saw her the other day in Midsummer, And now she's in this. And this was a much more lighthearted movie. And that's what I was looking for today. I've watched some pretty deep movies. And I was like, I need to watch something a little more lighthearted. So I'm glad that I finally watched this movie. And I can't believe it took me this long to watch it. Um, I enjoyed this movie. So right off the bat you see the screen for WWE Studios, and you're like, oh, well, even though I knew kind of going in who created this movie, when you see WWE Studios, you expect a certain level of quality that usually means um, trying to make an action movie and taking the wrestlers that they have, you know, and sticking them in action roles to try to make the movie stars. And they're usually directed DVD movies, and they're usually not very good. Uh, to the point where I don't even know if I've seen any of these, you know, like there's been John Cena movies. There's been like, I I see, I'll say other names and none of you will know them. Um, but there's just been a bunch of WWE studios movies that you, that it almost has a certain connotation. Like when you talk about Canon films or the asylum, uh, and then you say WWE studios, you just expect C plus B minus level action starring you know, WWE wrestlers as actors. And that's pretty much what you get most of the time. But this time you get, um, a, an actual movie written, but with actual actors and actresses written by actual, um, you know, acclaimed, uh, people. So the writer and director of this movie is Steven Merchant, who, if you're not familiar, is, is a fairly well-known British actor, comedian, writer, uh, I believe he was in the British version of The Office. I've just known him, the name, and the the person for years. I've never seen the British version of The Office. I know it's embarrassing. And if you watch the movie, you know that he plays the father of the son's girlfriend. So they're like this. There's like a stiff father and mother. They're kind of like very, you know, um, very boring and stiff. And you're like, what is wrestling? And that 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 man, Stephen Merchant, is the guy who wrote and directed the movie. Uh, and it stars also uh, as Paige's parents, um, Nick Frost and Lena Headey. I think I'm saying her name right. From Game of Thrones, from Terminator, Sarah Connor Chronicles, from multiple things. Uh, I've reviewed her uh, on Movie Month in the past for that Judge Dredd movie from a few years ago. And Nick Frost, um, well, actually, I reviewed him for Attack on the Block, Attack on the, of the Block. But you know him from all those Simon Pegg movies, you know, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, um, The World's End. Very funny comic actor. They play the parents. I don't, the, the guy who plays the brother, I kind of, he looks familiar, maybe from just seeing trailers for this, but I don't know who he is. I don't know the actor by name. And this is the story of just a young girl 
who grew up in a family of wrestlers, and that's what they do. They run a wrestling company. They perform shows for maybe 10, 15, 20, 30 people in a crowd, uh, and she kind of got pulled into it when they needed help one day. So she was wrestling when she was 13 years old, uh, and they kind of she's been doing it ever since. There's actually a documentary called like The Wrestlers Fighting with My Family, which is a documentary about this family that then they turned around and made a you know a, uh, a what I guess would you call it a non biopic, a non documentary. Hey, I don't know what you what's the difference when you call something a documentary, you know what that means. What is the opposite of documentary? <laughs> is it a na- na- narrative film, uh, feature film? I don't know. Whatever, whatever you want. It's an acted movie with actors. Um, it's an acting movie about real people that do a acting job. It's not fake. It's fixed. And if you tell them it's fake, they'll get very upset with you. Um, so it's 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 um, the story of a family, young brother and sister who are trying to get known by the WWE, which if you're familiar with wrestling in any respect, you've heard of WWF or WWE, at least. Even if you've never heard of wrestling, you've probably heard of WWF or WWE. You had to have. According to them, they are the, that you think they're the only place in town. Now, at the time of this, uh, in, in the world, there wasn't like, there were still other wrestling companies out there. So it's like, what's funny, what I saw it as is WWE sees themselves as the pinnacle, which they are, but Whereas if you don't make it there, you that's it, give up. Now, I don't know if that was the story with, I guess it seems like it was the story with Paige's brother because they're trying to, uh, you know, get noticed. They're trying to get seen. They keep, they keep sending tapes in, so they finally bring them in, uh, WWE's in England. They bring them in for a tryout, and um, they end up picking Paige, but not Paige's brother. The age-old, uh, you know, story of, um, oh, well, but we were both in this dream f- together. But it's actually what really happened. Um, the difference is, is there's, there is other options out there than just doing your your family's wrestling company. I mean, I don't want to name places without sounding really nerdy, but I don't know if they still exist then. But it wasn't like, uh, is Evolve England? No, it's not England. I don't know. There's definitely other wrestling companies. There's, there's British wrestling companies. There are things out there that this guy could have tried for. or And then you, what you do is you go do that for a while. You hone your craft, and you improve yourself, and then you try out again for WWE. That seems to be what a lot of people have done in the past, from my understanding. I, you know, as a wrestling fan, I, yes, I enjoy the dumb story of the fake fighting and all that stuff. But I also am just, I've always been interested in the, the machinations, the, is that the word? The behind the scenes, like the making of it, how... Things are trained, how stories are written, how a match is crafted. You know, like you, you see these guys fighting in this ring and it's all fixed. And sometimes you see them whispering to each other. And you and I always wonder, like, you know who the winner is going to be. You know pretty much how it's going to end um, without any unless someone screws up. Uh, but you always wonder, like, did they plan this entire thing? Like, is it boom, boom, boom? And they have to remember everything. I'm always it, things like that just interest me. So, um what, what am I talking about? I'm rambling about wrestling and not this movie. Anyway, um, so it's just to, that part of me, um, that part of this movie interested me as well. So he has to stay back in England. She goes off to the to, to the United States, and she shows up in Florida, which is where WWE has their performance center, which even that is, like, groundbreaking because, like, you know, for years, I don't think they had anything like that. So they they built this performance center they where they, they instead of, bringing people in from different companies that already have made a name for themselves or already um, are good at, you know, wrestling and well-known or whatever. They bring people here, and sometimes they bring people that are, you know, trying to wrestle, and some people, times they bring athletes in or that have never wrestled just because they have something. They see something. You know, it's like they bring in a ton of people to try to get a few that will stick. That's what it seems like. They bring these people in. They put them up. They pay them a little bit to train and practice and all this stuff and say, maybe you'll make the cut, maybe you won't. Um, and you've seen, like, they've even had reality shows like that where they bring people in and, oh, you've won the reality show, yay, and then you go on to uh, to sign a contract and nothing much happens because you just fall flat from there, where then there's people on these shows that didn't win 
and they go on to actually make a name for themselves because they come back and they keep going and I'm rambling and rambling and rambling again. Point of this is she goes to she goes from a small little rinky dink family run business in England to uh, the big time in Florida and she sees all these other women there and they're all like tall and and tan and blonde and thin and in bikinis and she's you know smaller shorter uh, she's got jet black hair she's got a ring in her lip she's got she's pale like she's more like a punk kind of kid um, and She's got to try to make her ways through the training and try to figure it out. And, you know, there's the thing where the, the girls don't the girls don't get along with her. She doesn't get along with the girls. They accidentally hit her. She hits back because that's wrestling 101. But that's not the way they do things in the WWE. And, uh, and you know, she feels separated from her family. She doesn't think she can do it. The training is a lot harder than she thought. Blah, 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 blah. You know, all the stuff that seems pretty straightforward uh, in a movie, it's just with the WWE tinge uh, or the, the flair. Um, and then she's, you know, like, I can't do it. So he's like, you know, um, maybe you should give up. But she never keeps, she never quits. She goes back to her family in um, England for Christmas and says she wants to quit. Her brother's been bitter with her and not talking to him because he wasn't picked up. No matter how much she's been fighting for him to get picked up, um, the coach is like, you know, he just didn't have it. He didn't have it. It's you, you. We saw something in you. Maybe you don't have it either. Maybe you should give up. Um, and but she doesn't give up. She goes home. She thinks she's going to give up. And the family's like, you've been doing this, you know, your whole life. This is for the, you know, th- this is for the family. Uh, but you know, the mother's like, who cares if this is for the family? Look at our family. We got one son in prison. The other son we can't even find. And, and Paige is unhappy, or uh, Rhea is unhappy. Um, what are we even, you know, doing? You just go back to robbing banks, which I thought was funny. If you rob robbing banks to support the family, if you have to, uh, but no, she goes back. Um, and she, uh, actually what happens? Oh yeah. She goes back and at one point, and then she starts becoming friends with the girls. She learns something about one of the girls that she has a daughter and they're like, I didn't know that. She goes, you don't know anything about us. You never ask. You never talk to us. And you realize these women are just women too, trying to make just people too, trying to make better for themselves. At one point, she um, tried to, to try to fit in. She bleaches her hair blonde. She gets a spray tan um, just to try to fit in. It doesn't really work. She ends up going back to the old look and trains, trains, trains. And then uh, they're like, the coach is like, all right, listen, um, the rest of you, you know, he, she, he cuts a few people. He's like, the rest of you, I have a special treat for you. You're all coming with us to WrestleMania. So it's WrestleMania 30. So this is six years ago. Um, and it was in New Orleans, I remember, because it was the first one that was on the WWE Network, meaning no more paying $50 for pay-per-views. You pay 10 bucks a month for a streaming network, and you watch it, uh, for bas- not for free, but you watch all the pay-per-views for 10 bucks a month instead of $50, uh, and blah, blah, blah. Um, yes, I'm a subscriber, so, but we all ended up going to my cousin's house um, and watching it. He had it rigged off his iPad onto his TV. It worked perfectly. Um, that was back before, like we, I think we were figuring, you know, Amazon fire stick and smart TVs. It worked. It was fine. Uh, but in the movie, she's there, uh, visiting and then she gets visited by the rock who we saw earlier in the movie, Dwayne Johnson. They call the family. He goes, I want to let you know that Paige is leave, moving on from the training facility, which, uh, the training company, which is called NXT. And he's going to be premiering on Monday Night Raw tomorrow night, which, for those who don't know, is the Monday night wrestling show that's been on every Monday since I was in high school. Um, and Right? I think. High school. I thought it was 93, right? I don't remember. Um, but I've been kind of on and off with wrestling over the years. Like, I stopped in high school and then my, like in college we got cable TV and all of a sudden I started watching it again then I stopped when I was a quote unquote a grown up and then all of a sudden I'm watching it again and that was like you know that's been for like the last 10 years I'm older than most wrestling fans should be anyway um, she goes to uh, so she's set to premiere on Monday Night Raw which in, if you're a wrestling fan you know this story already she shows up at Monday Night Raw um, out of nowhere to challenge the women's champion, which at the time they called it the Divas champion. 
Um, WWE is very like they are very much into WWE. In other words, you are not a WWE wrestler. You are a WWE superstar. So it used to be the men were superstars and the women were divas. That was how it worked. Men were superstars, women were divas. And at the end of this movie, they talk about how Paige helped issue in the women's evolution. She was one of these women who weren't just there for their looks. They could actually wrestle. And it ended up becoming... Um, where they got rid of the idea of divas, and it was just women's superstars and men's superstars, and a women's championship and a men's championship. Uh, so that, you know, because divas does sound a little antiquated and quite sexist. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, so she shows up that night to take on the divas champion, and she wins the championship. And all this, you realize, is part of the script. But winning a championship... To a wrestler, you've, you've heard it said many a time where it does mean something. Not because you've won a championship. What it means is the company that you work for sees something in you and has faith in you to be the quote-unquote face of this division or this whatever it is. You are the belt, meaning you're going to be highlighted on TV. You're probably going to get, you're probably selling shirts, so that always helps. So you are seen as someone who they can get behind who they can you promote, and they think that you can actually do this. So you always you see like behind the scenes where like someone wins a championship and they go backstage and they see Vince McMahon and they hug him. And they're like, "Thank you, thank you for this opportunity." It's like, "Oh, you've earned it," you know, all these things. So it's you aren't winning the belt, but you are earning it. It's a it's a weird it's a weird uh, way to see it, but that's why you see these guys that actually do care about these championships. It's like. You know, hitting, you know, winning an Oscar. Oh, I guess in winning an Oscar, you, you do win it. But you don't, you don't really win it. Someone chooses you uh, to win it. Someone voted for you. So it's like vote. It's like voting. You've been voted to be the championship. You, but usually it's just a vote of one, and that's the man who runs everything, Vince McMahon. So um, the, the movie ends with her winning the championship and her parents, her family in England, and her friends all celebrating. And yay. And she's the champion. And that's how the movie ends. And it's kind of, it's well, you know, a nice little button on the end. Perfect. Well, good story. And then from there, uh, in the real life, Paige went on to be a major player in the WWE. Good guy, bad guy, good guy, bad guy. And then she's had some ups and downs. And, like, you, unfortunately, she gets, like, real world stuff thrown in where she's, you know, they, they release a, a tape about her, which at one point... Vince Vaughn's name is like Rock calls him sex tape because he oh it'll make you famous and I was like oh what a bad choice because like this that that kind of controversy some d bag like our ex boyfriend like released stuff on her and then um, you know so she had to deal with that crap and then there was like a weird thing where she dated this one wrestler who was really much older than her now again that's your own choice but it seemed like. Paige was it, it was just weird like she was with this guy and she was she seemed like she was looking like a little erratic uh, and um, I could be completely speculating on these things just making this stuff up but she's with this much older guy and it just didn't seem and this, he's a wrestler who has since had like real bad accusations made about him uh, he seems like a real d-bag I don't want to name name well I mean who cares you don't look this stuff up uh, but then she's come back to the WWE now, I believe injuries of keeping her out of the ring, but they've kept her around, uh, to do like commentary, to do, um, managing of people. She's been on a talk show that they have. So they're keeping her around because they obviously still see something in her. Um, and the erraticness of her, like, um, like when, even when she was premiering, she was talking about this movie. There was like a weird commercial where it looked like her ma- her lipstick was all over the place. And she's like, come see my movie, Fighting With My Family. And she, I was like, what is going on here? But that, seem, that seems to have been, she seems to have, whatever that was. I don't know. I don't want to speculate, but I'm talking about this movie, not, not real life stuff. But what I also, what I was looking for in this movie was, um, Real wrestlers, like maybe these guys who are playing extras, maybe they maybe they are someone. Didn't recognize anybody. They had some real wrestlers that they um, that they uh, um, had as cameos, you know, in like the catering area, WrestleMania. And the woman she beat to be the champion wasn't the actual woman. The actual woman is out of wrestling as well. AJ Lee um, was a Divas champion. She, and if you're familiar with the name CM Punk. 
who was a wrestler who turned into a MMA fighter who now is a guy that they want to bring back to wrestling. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, he does commentary now. He does some um, – he's, he's hosted a game show on Netflix. Um, he uh, – they're married. So that's, they're married in real life. Um, he left. She left. And uh, But the woman who plays AJ Lee in this movie is a wrestler um, in the WWE now. She's like a manager stuff. Uh, and she, of course, she's married to another wrestler. I mean, there's like there's a long, long story of uh, wrestlers marrying wrestlers, and I'm completely rambling now. But it was cool to see her um, in uh, in the role. It was cool to see. Okay, so I mentioned this coach. I never brought up who it is. It's Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn had a much bigger role in this movie than I thought he would. Um. And he was good. He was. He had his Vince Vaughnness about him. You know, like you could see where he's kind of talking fast, rambling a little. He played the coach, who was a former wrestler. Uh, so he he had his little quips, his little one-liners, his thing where sometimes you think he's just making it up as he goes. Um, and I, it it was good to see him in that. Um, I haven't seen him do much in a while. There was a movie that I had on the list. I don't know if I'm going to get to it this year. That he's in, uh, he did he did um, True Detective, which it was a little weird. He was like dark in that. He's done some darker movies recently, um, and he was on uh, what was he on? He was Cur- on Curb Your Enthusiasm this last season, which I thought was pretty good. He was pretty good in that, uh, but I enjoyed him. I enjoyed Vince Vaughn in this movie. He was in it a lot more than I thought he would be, and of course Nick Frost is always good, um, and uh, Florence Pugh. Who I believe is in was she in that Little Women uh, movie? I want to say remake, because you can't remake a movie that's based on a book. You're just making another version of the book. Um, so she was in that 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 newest adaptation, I believe, of Little Women. She, I obviously, I don't say obviously. I assume she's just going to get bigger and brighter, and she's going to be a big star. I mean, she was good in this with her British accent, which is her real accent. And she was great in Midsummer with her American accent, where she was just like two completely, I mean, the most different roles and movies that just show you the range of a certain actress. Um, that is just like, you know, outstanding. So uh, really cool. And um, you can see that she's, I, I, this isn't the last time that I'm going to be doing a, uh, a Florence Pew review. Oh, I did that. This is, I think, my third rock movie. This I'm not even calling this a rock movie. He's in it for like three minutes, you know, total. Uh, maybe five. You know, at one point he, he gives like a little thumbs up kind of thing. Um, but this is not a rock movie. I mean, yes, Hobbs and Shaw was. Yes, Jumanji was. This, he's there. He's billed right there. He's thrown on the poster because... Dwayne Johnson sells tickets, and you're like, oh, he's in this? He's in it a little bit. He plays a minor part. He plays himself. Um, just altogether enjoyable. I've gone multiple times to see wrestling at small places like this family does. You know, there's a, there was a place in Lowell that, that used to do shows, as they say in the wrestling, they used to run shows out of the VFW. Um, and, or it was the Pol- no, actually, it wasn't the VFW. It was the Polish Americans Veterans Club. And I've seen uh, people that I've seen wrestle there go on to become major stars in the WWE. So, and I was there, we were there one night when one of these women and a guy uh, were announced as signing with WWE. And they were like, yeah, everyone cheered. And the guy went on to not do much. I think he got injured. And the woman went on to become a major star in WWE and she's still doing it today. So that was cool to see because someone who's doing local little wrestling can be noticed, can be picked up, can be signed and can go on to stardom, which is exactly what happened to Paige in this movie. Uh, so it is a definite real thing. Obviously this is based on a true story, but I've seen it firsthand. Yeah. I think that's it. I think I've done. I think I did it. 25 days down, 25 days done. Can you believe we only have 26, 27, 28, 29 and 30 left? I counted on my hands to remember to just make sure it was five, and I wasn't like screwing up and saying, "Wait a minute, no, no, six, five. Me am good at math. Five days left, five movies left. I have a list of movies that is about twenty-six movies long, and um, 
This one wasn't on it. It was in my Hulu queue because I wanted to watch it, but I didn't add it to the list. But oh crap. And uh, so I added it uh, today, and I'm going to take it right off. I don't, there's, and there's movies on this list where I'm like, mm, probably not this year, maybe not during movie month, uh, maybe I'll watch that later. I might want to watch that one with my wife. And there's a few things that, that I might, you know, take off and move on um, or add on. And uh, there's one that I am I am definite. I am 100% I know what day 30 is. Uh, but 26 through 29, you know, kind of up in the air. There's a couple that I definitely want to see. But nothing is a given, you know. Um, nothing is given. Nothing. Nothing is taken. That's all I'll say. Now. Until tomorrow, my friends, I want to thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. You can find the Podcast Geek Mentality on Stitcher, on TuneIn, on Google Podcasts, on Spotify, and on something called Apple Podcasts. I'm not sure what it is exactly, but it has something to do with fruit. You can find the website at fansnotexperts.com. The Facebook page is Fans Not Experts, where you can see every post from Movie Month with every photo of my mug on some guy's body photoshopped. Uh, and of course... You can find me personally on Twitter and Instagram at Geek Mentality, all one word. It is Thursday, the 25th. I'm still on vacation. Uh, I do. I am working on Monday, the 20 and 29th. Then on th- Tuesday, I have Tuesday off the 30th, which is good for the last movie. Having the day off will be good for that movie. Um, I need as much time as possible. Oh, and before I forget, uh, at one point, so what I didn't mention was the brother, um, while he isn't wrestling, he's running a wrestling school. So he picks up all these kids. So there's a little side story where he gets depressed and he doesn't pick up the kids and he does pick up the kids, blah, 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 blah. And he does, he's training a, a blind kid to be a wrestler, who turns out to actually become a wrestler. Um, but the only thing I want, I'm, the reason I'm bringing this up and mentioning it is because at one point they're driving the kids in the van. And um, they're cranking up some heavy metal and singing along. And I was like, whoa, that's Iron Maiden, baby. Yes, my favorite band made, um, made an appearance in this movie. They, it was a song. And the funny, when you think about the song, it's called Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter, which is kind of a perfect kind of title for this um this movie which is also funny because it was written it was written almost as a solo song for the lead singer then they brought it back to the band and then they put it i think in one of the nightmare on elm street movies it's it's a it's a it's it's a weird song from a from an album that came out when i was like a freshman in high school um good times good times and of course you heard it already because you listened to this podcast anyway i just wanted to mention a little iron maiden is there as well look at that movies pod um wrestling iron maiden it's like all my podcasts mixed into one all right that's it i'm done here is my theme song this is my podcast i made it geek mentality is what i named it and i think you should listen and subscribe Cause I'm kinda funny and awesome I think that I'm worth your time And I'm kinda handsome My mom says Please listen and Please subscribe At least listen to this episode That's not experts